Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Card Trade Q2 FY22 results conference call hosted by Access Capital Limited. At this moment, all participants are in listen only mode. A question and answer session will be conducted towards the end of the session. At that time, you may click on ask a question tab and type your question. Participants on audio call may enter star one to ask a question. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Nishit Jalan. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, Nishit, over to you, please. I think Nishit is... Okay. Yeah, Nishit, over to you. Yeah, hi, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, there was some issue with my connection. Uh, yeah, hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Q2 FI22 result conference call of card trade. Uh, from the management team, we have uh, Mr. Vinay Vinod Sanghi, Chairman, Managing Director, and CEO, Anisha Menon, CFO and Director, and Vikram Alva, Chief Strategy Officer. I'll now hand over the call to Vinay uh, for his opening remarks, and he will take us through uh, the presentation as well, post which uh, we can have Q&A. Over to you, Vinay. Uh, thank you, uh, Nishit, and, and and thank you for everybody for joining in this morning uh, for this first investor presentation uh, for the company. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out and spending the time out. Um, just before we go into the earnings, and of course, we've uploaded it yesterday on uh, uh, all our earnings and, and the presentation itself, and I hope you all have a copy of the presentation. I'll just take give you a little bit of a recap, uh, you know, uh, um, on, on the business, on, on, on the strategy and the business itself. Uh, and Vikram, will you go to the next slide, please? You know, this is something we showed uh, earlier on, and it's also part of our uh, document, uh, in, uh, which we filed uh, prior to the IPO, is what are we looking to build? We are looking to create in India an automotive digital ecosystem. And then what we've been able to create over the last 10 years is, is connecting all the stakeholders to one digital platform. So, uh, you know, at the top, as you can see, all our brands, car trade, car wale, bike wale, where we have millions of customers covering uh, every month and every day and every year uh, for selling a vehicle or buying a vehicle. Uh, you might see from the data that 34 million people per month come to sell the vehicle or buy the vehicle on one of our platforms. Uh, that's a huge number. 34 million come and 86% or 87% of them come organically, which means they come without us paying for them. Uh, which is one of the reasons why our company's got a very high just a bit of margin. Um, so as I said, part of this ecosystem which we're creating are, is the brand of, of our platforms and the 34 million customers which come. Also part of this ecosystem is, a is the technology and software we have created, where we've connected all the stakeholders, connected customers, dealers, manufacturers, banks, insurance companies, all onto one platform. So dealers can come in and buy vehicles or sell vehicles. Banks can give loans or sell vehicles manufacturers can sell vehicles and customers that I said can buy or sell vehicles. So as much as we're a brand with 34 million customers come, we're a technology software company which connects all these stakeholders of the automotive industry onto one platform. Uh, but we're also India, one of India's leading places or destinations for automobile data. Uh, we auctioned last year almost uh, more than, I mean, in the last quarter, more than 300,000 vehicles, which is almost a 1.2 million run rate. Um, we have these 34 million customers coming. We also have most dealers in India on our platform, and therefore we're the largest warehouse for automotive dealer data, consumer data, as well as vehicle data. So what are we looking to create? We're looking to create an automotive digital ecosystem with the cost trends being the customers and the brand, uh, the technology and software which interlinks all these stakeholders, and the data which we carry in our warehouse. If you can go to the next slide, Vikram. And you know, as I said, over the last 10 years, um, the strengths we would talk about is the brand, the platforms, the technology, the software, the data science, and, and the algorithms which we carry. Uh, we are a profitable business uh, with a adjusted EBITDA margin of 28%. And of course, at the, at the, at what, what brings all this together and all the strengths together and the foundation we've created the last 10 years together 
is is the entire team at at Cartridge Tech. Can you go ahead, Vikram? Um, when we look at you know the strengths we have and what we've created the last ten years, and look at the future of the company, and this slide is very critical to explain what we want to do over the next ten years, fifteen years. On the left is the consumer group, right, which is carries all our core businesses. Uh, the new car business, we can come and buy a new car. The, a used car, we can come and buy a used car. But we also have India's leading two-wheeler platform called Bikewale, and we believe that's a strong growth area for the future for us. Um, as many of you know, that the GMV on two-wheelers in India is almost equal to the GMV on new cars, um, and we believe that uh, Bikewale, which is one of our leading uh, or the, one of our faster-growing businesses, can 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 be of certain scale and size over the next two to three four years. So really on the consumer group, we've got the new car side, the used car side, and the two-wheeler platform. But there's also a services angle for the future, car servicing, car repair insurance. We haven't addressed this yet, but as we go on in the future, obviously we're looking at uh, incubation or investments or acquisition in the space of car servicing, car repairs, car insurance, so that we can enter the car services. All these 34 million customers we get every month required to repair their car or insure their car. So, so we're closely looking at the car services space. And then there's the remarketing side of our business, whereas we, as you know, we auction almost uh, 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 a hundred of almost a million, over a million vehicles a year, uh, where we have these vehicles which are auctioned, are supplied by consumers like you and me, businesses, uh, businesses include banks which have repossess inventory, insurance companies, dealers, fleet owners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So really, the consumer group and the remarketing group is what makes up our revenues and profits today. Uh, but we look at the future of the company over the next, you know, uh, ten years, fifteen years, or and then we obviously want to get into other areas. Franchising is a big area of expanding into, and we'll cover that in the presentation a little later. How we're making, you know, digitizing the entire journey of buying a used car, and franchising is helping to do that. And we'll talk about it a little later. Cartridge Finance, a big initiative. I'll talk about it a little later as well, where we're looking at all these 34 million customers getting a loan in a digital form uh, on our platform today. Um, and then the software service angle, you know, all our customers, dealers, manufacturers, banks use our software for some part of their business or the other. Some of these businesses have taken our software internationally as well. So, for example, BMW has taken our dealer management solution to their dealers in Asia. And then, of course, the areas of new areas of investment, right? Electric vehicles, these are all new age businesses, ride sharing, connected vehicles. Um, but if you look at us, really, we're a platform where at the core a current new car, used car, remarketing business that are driving all the growth and the profitability. As we look at the future, next 10 to 15 years, car servicing, car insurance, car financing, you know, two-wheelers, software, all these become core business of the company, which will give us just a limitless opportunity to grow. It almost it amounts to a $14 billion TAM for us for the future for the next 10 to 15 years. Can we go to the next slide, Vikram? You want to take this? Yeah, I'll take this, yeah. So as Vinay spoke to you about, about the businesses we are in, the businesses we are incubating, and the business we want to be into. The total revenue pool, or the TAM as we call it, is about 14.3 billion. This is not GMV value, but this is the revenue pool available to us. This ranges from vehicle transactions, after sales, service, accessories. Ad spends is a 1.8 billion revenue opportunity, there are TAM opportunity there. Auto finance is a 1.4 billion opportunity. The reason we are able to address or target this 14.3 billion opportunity is because of the strong brands we've got and the great amount of traffic they generate for us. Uh, also, India is really poised to grow rapidly. Uh, we are poised to be the third largest auto market by 2025. If you look at the projections for new cars, new two-wheelers and used cars, they're going at 10% CHR for the new car business, uh, new car sales, uh, going about 8% CHR for new two-wheelers, about 11% CHR for used cars. So, huge time opportunity. Uh, the country is growing. We are supposed to be the third largest auto market in the next few years. Uh, a few small highlights about uh, what's happened in the last six months. Uh, obviously, COVID has hit us in the first quarter of this financial year. Uh, between April to June, July, there were lockdowns and therefore dealerships were mostly closed during these periods. Uh, the other big issue is, or the issue which is there is our semiconductor issue and supply side issues right now. Uh, what we estimate and what we understand is these issues on the supplies of semiconductors, etc., should taper off by the end of this financial year. Uh, the large time, uh, growing markets, and our strong brands will help us take us forward. You know, as as, as we as we've talked through the last few slides, are really about uh, what we achieved in the last ten years, and and then the future of the company for the next ten to fifteen years, and how our strategy is based. As, as Vikram says, you know, there's a huge time out there and, and um, 
Also, the industry itself uh, is poised to be the third largest industry, auto industry in the world in the next few years. Um, coming back to you know this particular uh, quarter and half one for us, uh, how our performance has been. We are continuing to be India's leading two-wheeler uh, and car automotive plot portal, only profitable, it just a bit up of profitable. And as as you can see from the FI20, which we had earlier shared as well, vehicle agnostic, cars, commercial vehicles, uh, average monthly unique results 34 million in Q2. This is the highest ever we've ever reached. Uh, um, and it's a massive number, 34 million unique visitors per month this is. Uh, and this is our last quarter average. What is more remarkable is 86.68% of these come organically. Organically means we don't pay for it uh, and it shows the brand affinity of the company itself and the platforms we have. Our auction volume is at an annualized volume of 1.2 million, which is also our highest ever numbers in Q2, uh, which we achieved here. Um, the run rate revenue has come to 3.5 billion or 352 crores, uh, which is annualized for Q2. The profitability or the adjusted bid is almost 97.8 crores uh, on, on an annualized Q2 number. And the adjusted EBIT margin is at 28% in Q2. So, so all our numbers are, you know, and you look at the traffic, you look at the number of users, or you look at the number of vehicles auction, um, and any EBITDA margins or, or revenues almost, you know, reached our peak in Q2 uh, this year, right? Um, can we go ahead to the next slide? Anisha, you want to drill down on this? Sure, we'll happily take this up. So as when I mentioned, we had an adjusted EBITDA margin at 28% for Q2. And if you look at the growth numbers, which is uh, evident out here, the half year number uh, for FI22 was at 150 crores, as against 103 crores of last year, which gives us a 46% growth in revenue. On an adjusted EBITDA, we are at 33 crores as against 16 crores, which gave us 104% growth from last year, which is how the, uh, and you can look at the Q2 numbers with an 88 crore of revenue, we have a 24 crores of an adjusted EBITDA, which gave us this 28% margin. The only exceptional item uh, which is uh, there in this quarter and in this half year is explained by way of a note. It's exceptional, non-recurring and a non-cash adjustment, which was on account of the ESOPs that were granted in this year. These ESOPs were granted with a vesting period of one year, which is an accounting entry, which is uh, uh, which is an entry that we need to pass uh, as per the India standards, is to park that entry into our cost, which is why uh, we've got this large cost, which you can see on the table below. There's a 93 crore cost in the half year and a 46 crore cost in Q2, which has resulted in a, a negative number. But at, at reiterate, at the adjusted EBITDA levels, we are definitely positive and we have great margins at 28%. We can move on to go ahead in the, uh, to the next slide. Uh, these are the numbers which will give you the consistent revenue and adjusted EBITDA growth that we have witnessed be it Q2 versus Q1, Q2 versus Q2, or H1 versus H1, we have had 40%, 39%, 46% growth all throughout in revenue. On the adjusted EBITDA margin side, from Q2 to Q1, we had a 186% growth that we witnessed. Q2 to Q2 is 34%, and H1 to H1 is 104%. Uh, Vikram, if you could help me with the next slide. And uh, in fact, you could, uh, would you like to take up the next slide? Yeah, yeah. So as Vinay said, in this quarter, we've reached our highest average ever average monthly UVs at 34 million. This is an 86.68% of this came organically. That means for 86.68% of our traffic, we don't send us spend a single rupee. This is a serious and big competitive advantage for us. Uh, our UVs have grown quarter on quarter. If you look at from Q to Q1, we've grown about 28% and we've grown about 21% in the organic part of it. Uh, our strong traffic and most of it coming organic is a huge competitive strength for us. Uh, Google Trends also shows that we are leaders as far as online brand searches go. Uh, Google Trends is a really good indicator of how our brands perform vis-a-vis -vis our competitors' brands. Uh, this graph is only for about one and a half years. You can do this trend by yourself for the last 10 years and you can see that we are uh, way above our competitors. Uh, even though our competitors spend money and they sometimes inch upwards, as soon as the advertising spends reduce a little, uh, we've maintained a domination with them. They're about one and a half times our nearest competitor, about seven to eight times more than a second nearest competitor in the Google Trends. Uh, that's on the car side. On the bike space, uh, we are a clearly dominant player with a bike wallet portal. Uh, the reason we've got such strong brand affinity is because 
Our brands are synonymous with trust, quality, reliability, and consumers love our brands. Uh, uh, if you look at the auction platforms, uh, we have reached the highest ever auction listing numbers at three lakh six uh, three lakh six hundred seventy one hundred. Um, our annualized uh, listing run rate is now one point two million. This is based on annualized number of FI uh, Q two FI twenty two. Uh, as you can see, our auction listing numbers of Q2 versus Q1 has grown by about 42%. The same is with auction listings of Q2 versus Q2 is about 73%. Actually, uh, I said that the right number. I am. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't see it very clearly out here. Um, uh, and we've shown consistent growth on our auction listings and auction sales volume. You know, I want to talk a little about some of the key initiatives we've done in the last six months. Um, one of the biggest initiatives going on in the company is digitizing India's auto industry. So we can, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and this really comes from, you know, digitizing the entire journey of buying or selling a, a car. Um, if you come to Carwale today, um, and, and what our attempt is over the next few years is, is right from finding your car, selecting your car, choosing your car. We want you to be able to get a test drive booked online. We want you to be able to um, book the car online, get a loan instantly disbursed to you online, um, uh, get a price for your old car online, which is a trade-in, um, and, and you know, get an insurance policy line, then have the car delivered to you. So we want, in a way, to create the entire journey of you buying a vehicle or selling a vehicle at the click of a button. And, and we are spending extensive time in digitizing this entire journey along with manufacturers, banks, and other stakeholders um, so that the customer experience on on buying a car is almost like buying, uh, you know, a, a cloth item or any other item which they normally do on everyday purchases. So, this is this is a this is a project which we've undertaken for a few months now, and and um, some parts of it already are done, some parts are underway. But but the attempt here is to make sure that you can get a vehicle, and or the journey of buying the vehicle is completely digitalized, uh, so that the customer gets the best experience possible. We can go to the next slide. As part of the journey, the first thing we've done is really uh, provide a fantastic uh, buying experience for used car customers. So we've already started putting up Carwale, Abshore stores. Now they're in nine cities. Uh, what these stores do is have full certified cars and a certain look and feel uh, for a customer to buy a used car and have a fantastic shopping experience. Um, all the vehicles in these stores are listed on Carwale uh, as certified vehicles. Uh, they come with a warranty. They come with a full peace of mind. Uh, and the customers can come online today and get a complete digital buying experience. So you can come online, you can find the car, you can select the car, you can look at the report and the condition, you can choose the car, you can book the car. Uh, so we're trying at the first attempt to digitize the entire buying journey of the used car business. Uh, we put up these uh, um, locations and, and put up these digital stores so that you can get a complete peace of mind and buying experience to buying all these all these high quality used cars. Can we come to the next slide, please? Yeah, this is the promise for the used cars. Uh, you know, seven day money back, so you can buy this car and return it back if you don't like it. Um, of course, the complete guarantee of it being a not tampered or, or zero accident vehicle. Uh, the cars are completely checked to make sure the condition is good and they carry a warranty on it. So, so this is a real attempt at digitizing the entire used car business. And we're, as I said, launched in nine cities so that you can choose a car, select a car, book the car, and then use the car with a warranty uh, and with a full peace of mind. And if you, for some reason, do not feel you can just return it, right? It's, it's, it's a very unique offering um, in, in the industry itself. So this is the first attempt at digitizing the entire buying journey of, 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 the, of, of the new car and the used car industry. Let's go ahead and come. What we've also done is digitize the loan experience, right? So today you can come onto Carvale and you can uh, you select a vehicle, a new car or a used car or a two wheeler. Uh, uh, you can uh, put in your details and we, we look, take our data from the, from the credit bureau, send your data to multiple banks so that the banks instantly, a process which is physical in the real world and takes a long time, can instantly give you a loan approval back. This is a product that's already live on Carvale uh, and Bikewale uh, and all our platforms. And, and today, uh, it's probably the easiest and most convenient way of getting a digital loan. Uh, we believe that this is going to be a big part of our future. All these 34 million customers on our platform need a loan, and we are heavily investing in technology uh, with banks uh, and other stakeholders to make sure the customer gets a choice of multiple, multiple loans uh, at the click of a button and instantly. Right? Uh, we believe that this could be one of our larger businesses in the next three to four, five years. You can go to the next slide, please. 
for this we've you know already created one of uh, uh, we are looking to create india's largest auto loan marketplace it is already one of the largest auto loan marketplaces in the country uh, multiple banks and you can see the list of all the partnership banks all the leading banks in india are partners to us and and the thousands of customers today who can come in and and, and you know get a loan uh, of their choice from any of these banks or or finance providers let's go ahead with that um uh, you know this is what we had today um what what we'd like to do is now you know after this preamble of 20 25 minutes where we've talked a little bit about the what we the foundation we've created a little bit about our results a little bit about the future a little bit about some of the key products we're focused on we happy to go into q&a and answer all the questions of all the participants so we can probably stop sharing we can work yeah i'll do that thank you very much Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, please click on the Ask a Question tab below the media player to send a question via text. Participants connected on the audio call may enter star one on your touchstone telephone. The operator will announce your name when it is your turn to ask a question. Please unmute your microphone while proceeding with your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. first question is from the line of amit pirani from jp morgan please go ahead yeah hi uh, uh thanks for the opportunity and for the detailed presentation uh my uh, question was actually you know more on the uh, the tam that you you know uh, laid out uh, the 14 billion dollar revenue pool uh, you know, a uh, quite an interesting slide and help us to think about let me request you to please use uh, the so handset mode you are not clearly audible Hi. Is is it better now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh. Uh. So my question was most. Uh. So when I see a six and a half billion dollar revenue opportunity from medical transaction, uh, is this what you can achieve, or is this the market opportunity, and then you will obviously have a certain you know uh, high market share within that? Uh. And similarly, on the auto finance uh, opportunity. um i mean how are you defining it because you know uh, i think auto finance could be a larger number unless i'm 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 mistaken here uh vikram you want to take this up yeah yeah so i think uh, can you hear me yeah so the time is actually the overall market size actually right it, and within that we will have a share of that market size it is not uh, completely that we will do that's the total market which is there and we will have a portion of that is that's the way the time is defined so okay. Secondly, on the auto finance part, I think uh, it's a percentage of the loan book, which is part of the revenue opportunity for us. So it's not the GMV value. I think what you are looking at is kind of okay. GMV value. This is a percentage of the auto loan markets uh, or the existing loans in the market in the auto sector. A uh, percentage of that basically is what the banks and other people will make of it. Okay. Okay. Great. That that's helpful. And uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you can share this or you know maybe give us some you know directional view on how the profitability of the various uh, segments is is moving because uh, I think uh, auto mall was I think has been profitable for some time now but I think we were seeing an improvement in profitability in the in the new car used car space also you know so some sense on how these are moving will be will be great. Anisha, you want to take that up? Shavana, so uh, just to clarify, both our businesses have been profitable and for a very long time, and uh, I know it's. Uh, so in fact, the results that we have uploaded will also have this. So I can definitely answer this. If you could look at the March numbers or the current numbers, and you carve out Samil, both the entities have uh, given those EBITDA margins of 28%. So it was the 27 and 28, but both have healthy margins. So it's not only Samil which is profitable. Oh, oh, great! Thank you. I'll I'll come back. Sure. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vimal Gohil from Union AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. <coughs> uh, uh, so, firstly, uh, if you could just um, uh, if you could just probably highlight, uh, we have uh, uh, Vinay spoke about uh, uh, three core businesses, uh, which is the remarketing business, the new car business, and the used car business. Uh, uh, 
can we have some sense as to you know uh, how much how much of these three businesses would be contributing to that uh, 77 crore of revenue in this quarter sure um, you know anish i can just answer. take that 50 57 yes. 50, about 57 odd percent comes from um, yes. Our remarketing business, which is helping consumers yes. like me and you sell vehicles, big businesses sell vehicles to fleet owners and dealers. Uh, it's a C two B B two B business, which is fifty seven percent. The rest comes from our core new car used car uh, uh, you know platforms where consumers like you and me can come and buy a car or sell a car, uh, which is on car wale, bike wale, car trade, etc. All our platforms. So that's just the yeah. brief breakup of of how revenues are structured. Uh, so uh, Vinay, uh, how this? Uh, uh, firstly, these numbers are for the first half, or for the quarter, or how is it? The, 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 uh, it's first half, right, Anisha? Am I right? So the 77 number that he spoke about was Q2, where you're absolutely right. 56% is Samal. For H1, it is about 54%, but it's always been in the same range, Vinay. So both H1 and Q2 to answer his question would be at the range of 56 yeah. and 54, coming from Samal business right. or the remarketing uh, business. Uh, 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 Ma'am, would it be possible to uh, break uh, break this old car, new car business further? Uh, as in, how much is how much is contributed by the new car? Because I just want to understand the potential. Our uh, uh, you know the new car business, where we where we provide uh, where there is a potential to you know increasing ad spends by you know most of these uh, OEMs. Uh, they are going to increase their digital ad spends and uh, uh, in line with what is happening globally. Uh, so maybe just wanted to understand how much of that how much of our revenues is coming from there. So it may be uh, difficult to split it, uh, but but what I can tell you is the larger part of, is the new car side. Uh, um, I think I think okay. what we found over the last eight ten years is the new car monetization has um, has has, you know, has 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 taken probably the first step, you know, in this whole automotive digital industry. Um, and and uh, so the new car part is the larger in it. Uh, we can't obviously split uh, the new car use car side. Fair, fair enough. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, in in the first half of uh, FY22, and uh, did you see OEMs uh, sort of pull back some of their ad, uh, ad spend, uh, uh, which also which also impacted you guys? Uh, uh, any any sense I can a uh, sense that you can give because my uh, what what I what what I have been hearing and what we've been reading is that while ad spends are down, uh, there have been cuts on the traditional channels, which is maybe television or newspapers, etc. Uh, but uh, uh, the ad spends are probably holding up at least as far as uh, the di uh, digital mediums are concerned. Uh, so uh, a comment over there will help. Thank you. Sure. So 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 the revenue growth of the company is forty six percent. So obviously the answer uh, and across all businesses there's significant growth. So I think uh, the answer that the OEMs have spent with us is 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 obviously correct because the revenue is grown by forty six percent of the company. Um, I think the way to answer this question is that there is generally over a long period of time a shift from offline media to digital uh, uh, from car manufacturers and industry as large. Um, that shift, you know, I think I think our RHP said it's about 30, 40 percent of all spends are digital. Uh, we believe that over, you know, in, in many other countries in the US or other places, it's almost 35, 40 percent. And there's a trend that car manufacturers and dealers will spend more money on digital over the next three, four or five years. Like it's in most developed markets, um, you know the way we see this, um, you know, in the last few months, some of this has got accelerated because of of just the the COVID impact and behavioral change of consumers, who now more than ever come or use digital as a first form of any purchase process, right? Uh, and that is driving. If you see our traffic, that's driving our highest level traffic as well last quarter. So, so I think we've seen those trends. Um, Obviously, we as a business would like it to be far more than uh, and more acute. Uh, but but yeah, the trends are it's a long term secular movement towards digitizing across the board in the industry. I, mean, I was going to say that I would have loved to say that 46 percent is after the cut. <laughs> that the fact is we have not seen any of these cuts. I mean, we've seen a healthy growth of 46 percent in our business. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Ding Vico from East Spring Investments. Please East. go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, could you give us a bit more clarity on the nature of the inventory of the auction business? I, I have been to the Samo website and it appears that in whatever's listed, 
um, shows that the bulk of inventory seems to be CVs. Yet at the same time, I understand, you know, from the auction business, maybe only 25% should be CVs. I'm wondering where is this, you know, non-CV inventory being listed? I don't think we got the second part of the question, uh, but but just to clarify uh, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, our auction business, 1.2 million vehicles, got a mix of CVs and, and passenger cars and other products. Um, um, we we are very bullish on the commercial vehicle industry by itself. I think uh, the the document even RHP shows that approximately one 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 and a half million commercial vehicles or used commercial vehicles are traded every year. In Sri Lanka, we have very unique experience uh, opportunity. I would say to to tap the entire used commercial vehicle market. So it's something we're very excited about. It's uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's not uh, in percentage terms. It's a smaller part of our total inventory. But something we're trying to invest behind and focus on for the future, we, we do believe that we can be a significant used commercial vehicle auction player. Uh, um, we already probably the leading player, but to become a used significant uh, in the next few years. Um, it's a it's a it's a for us an area where uh, beyond passenger cars, uh, it's an area for us to focus on. Uh, obviously, passenger cars is probably the leading area for us as far as auctions or our or our B two C businesses. But really, when we go forward, we like to focus on the used commercial vehicle industry as well, and and make sure that that one and a half million used commercial vehicles is something we can we can make a big dent in. Could you? So I thanks thanks for that. I mean, the answer to the first question. Thanks. On the second question was that you know I have visited the Samo um, website, and it seems that you know a lot of the inventory being listed there are for CV inventory, such as for Ishok Leyland or, or, or Tata CVs. So I'm just wondering where is this non-CV inventory coming from? Is there some kind of integration with the main Kawali platform? Uh, I'm just the going to answer. Yeah. One thing is we have Carted Exchange also as an online platform where vehicles are listed. So it's not only the Samil website. When I go ahead. Was the question that uh, where does a non-CV inventory come from? What is that the question? No, no, he's asked. I think he's trying to see it on the site when I think on the website he's trying to figure out where the oh, stock I see, is I appearing. See. No, no, where is this in different different platforms? So, uh, but but the CV, uh, but the but the inventory on on Shiram Auto Mall and its subsidiaries comes from it could come from dealers, it could come from consumers like you and me, it could come from. Uh, you know, uh, fleet owners. Uh, it could come from banks, which have repossessed inventory. It come from insurance companies. It's a very long tail of consumers and and business sellers. So, sorry. So, this non-CV inventory is it being listed on another platform, or is everything being it listed be on all platforms? It will be on Carted Exchange. It will be on Shiram Auto Mall. Both of them, I think. Am I right? Um, okay, that's correct. Right. Okay, and and just Shiram Auto Mall alone, would it be mainly CV? No, it's a mix of all 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 product all products. Okay, okay, and and the split would be around the same. Twenty five percent of it would be CVs, and the rest would yes. be non CVs. We're not able to give an exact percentage, but it would be in a range of that commercial vehicle would be yeah, but it would be that range. Okay, thanks. Um, and could you comment on you know the kind of integration and synergies that this option platform has with you know the the used car, new car, core platform? How does this integrate with the core part of the business? So, so we have a large number of sellers coming on car wallet to sell their car, as as you know. Um, and uh, one of the things we're working heavily in terms of synergy projects is how do we seamlessly um, Get a customer to list on Carvale and you know auction the vehicle on Shiram Auto Mall. It's a project which is underway, um, and, on the, and that's one of the reasons why we acquired Shiram Auto Mall a couple of years ago. Uh, and and the synergies across the consumer seller on Carvale and the auction systems on on Shiram Auto Mall. What we've gone one step further, and it's in the RHB as well, is with manufacturers we are trying targeting and doing the same thing, which is if you if you look at MG Motors, which is one of our partners. So we, what we're looking to do is. Any trade-in vehicle which comes in there is also auctioned back on Shira Motor Mall. So we're finding different sources of supply to Shira Motor Mall, which is the growth of these vehicles of 1.2 million run rate. 
is coming from consumers from car wale which is integrated to shinham automotive that will provide for future growth because that integration is underway uh, and the second of course is time when manufacturers and dealers also is applying cars or passenger vehicles into into shinham automotive auctions uh, but yeah these are all supply sources for us uh, for us uh, people selling on car wale also have different needs right so somebody selling on car wale might buy a new car and do a trade in as well so it's possible they might go into a new car dealership somebody selling on car wale also wants to see to see transaction and sell to another consumer so so the consumer the categorized in the various things but but one of the projects we are working on from a synergy standpoint is to make sure if you sell on or looking to sell on car wale and you want the best price uh, 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 from a dealer is how do we seamlessly auction it out on on shinam automotive Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just have one more thank question, you. which is: Could you give, you know, more clarity on the development of the franchisee business? What's the roadmap and timeline uh, in terms of store expansion? Sure, this is a big part of our, uh, you know, future expansion, uh, and I think it comes from how do we seamlessly make a used car available online for you to buy uh, with all the peace of mind you need. to buy the vehicle so that involves multiple things i think the first part of it is the digital buying experience which means your ability from a technology standpoint to come online find the car select the car book the car get a loan online etc etc because large percentage of these customers want a digital loan as well and then once the loan is instantly disbursed how do you make sure the car is instantly delivered to you or you can pick it up uh, and the logistics of that is managed so it's a seamless end to end experience of buying a used vehicle online um you know part of the physical side of it which is making the vehicle available to the logistics of it being delivered to you or collecting it is about putting up locations across the country and we're now in nine cities we put up these locations so that you can see me pick up the vehicle or vehicle can be delivered to you uh, uh um and of course the availability that the vehicle carries a, a full warranty from car wale uh, and a guarantee in a way because you can return it if you don't like it right so uh, this is you know as far as we are concerned a very critical part of our used car side of our business uh, the b2c side a uh, big expansion planned um, you know the next few years um, um, as i said already nine cities but this is rampantly uh, you know the, to the rampant growth and development going on here i think it will be one of our faster growing businesses in the next two to three years i think uh, but but there's huge focus of the organization making this used car seamlessly online available to you uh, you know when you want to buy it on on car wale Okay, thank you. That was helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I would now hand the conference over to Nishit for the chat questions. Over to you, Nishit. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, so ah, uh, we have a few questions on Xbox. Ah, uh, the first one from Rajesh Pedmikar of BNP Paribas. Ah, uh, he's asking, ah, uh, could you provide the segmental breakup of website ah uh, website services, commission income, and used car sales this quarter? and how do you see it pan out uh, for the full year uh, we have similar question from sham sundar also who is asking the uh, breakdown of stand alone revenues between the new and used car business i think we answered this a little earlier uh, 57% of our revenues come from our c2b b2b auction business and the rest comes from our b2c side of our business uh, um that's a segmentational breakup uh, on the b2c side the larger part is new but we are not at this point able to give a breakup between the new and the used car side of the revenues Anisha, you want to add on to anything out here? Yeah, when I even the adjusted capital, the composition is similar. So we have fifty-six percent coming from some of the rest is sure. standalone entity. Okay, uh, we have another question from Rajesh Pedmikar. How are the unique views calculated? Is it based on uh, a page click clicks tab, or is it per visitor regardless of how many pages they click on? Yeah, I'll add because I can answer, and then you can just add on if you like. Um, this is actually unique customers or unique visitors per month. Uh, it's, if if one person clicks five times, then it's counted as one, not five. So this is unique customers. So 34 million is unique. It's not uh, visits as we call or number of visits or page views. This is just number of unique people. Am I right, Vikram? Yeah, I think Vinay is correct. It's it's tracked by Google Analytics basically. Google Analytics understands when a customer comes. Once in a month and tracks them as unique, basically. So it's not page views or it's not hits. It's basically a unique visitor coming to a website in a calendar month. Just to add to that, uh, another point because eighty-eight percent is organic. It's it's not that someone has come to just click for seeing the site, right? They are they're genuine customers who have come on the site. Uh, 
Sure. So we have another question from Ashwini Agarwal. Uh, his question is on the franchise business. Regarding AppSure, what is the business model? Are we buying those vehicles from sellers and investing money in it? How does it work for us? Yeah, AppSure outlets, uh, their franchise stores, so uh, dealers buy vehicles, uh, invest in that and, and refurbish them to our standard. And then we certify these vehicles, uh, check these vehicles, put up a warranty and a money back guarantee and then uh, put them up for sale on carwale.com. Uh, so it's an end digital experience, uh, uh, you know, to the customer. We've tried to, as a company, stay asset, right? Where we don't own the store and the infrastructure at all. Uh, the dealer puts that up, um, uh, and we, of course, on 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 sale of the vehicles, charge a transaction fee uh, uh, to all dealers, which is very high margin business for us. Uh, so it's a it's a complete. It gives you it gives customers a complete digital experience to buy a vehicle online and then have it delivered to them with complete peace of mind. It allows our dealer to be, uh, it allows to ramp up fast because we've chosen a franchise way of rolling this out. So we're already in nine cities. Um, and also um, it provides, uh, it's a model where we make high margins uh, and the dealer as well is, stays profitable. I think I think that's the way we thought about it. Sure, Vinay. Vinay, uh, one uh, related question uh, on franchise business from uh, Garima Mishra of Kotak. Uh, what targets do you have uh, for the franchise business in terms of revenue sold? Uh, what is your uh, revenue model here? And uh, do you offer any kind of uh, financing to dealers opting for franchisee of AppSure? Yes, okay, good question. Uh, we, uh, um, we charge a percentage of the, of the selling price as our revenue. Um, as I said, that's high margin business for us. Our targets in this business are around, obviously, number of cities, number of locations, uh, volume of vehicles sold. These are internal metrics. Uh, revenues from these vehicles. These are all our internal metrics. Um, 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 and do we give working capital? In some cases, we are starting to explore if the dealer needs money, whether we should be lending money or giving money for the transaction or buying or selling the vehicle on behalf of the dealer. So that that process under pilot underway. Uh, we haven't taken a firm view on it. But but in a case where we got a very good dealer who might need working capital. We're exploring the possibility of arranging or giving him the working capital or the working capital required. Uh, sure. Uh, another question from Garima of Kotak. How long do the vehicles stay on the auction platform? Uh, what happens when vehicles fail to get sold? On the auction platform, the vehicles can differ. It can be uh, you know, a three-hour uh, auction. It can be a three-day auction. I think it just depends what the seller and the seller type wants. Um, when the vehicle does get bid, uh, it's a binding bid. So the person who, who's bid on it uh, 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 needs to pay for the vehicle and and lift it. We many of us buyers or most of our buyers carry deposits lying in the company. So um, if buyers or dealers or regular buyers on the platform uh, do not uh, fulfill or do not agree to buy the vehicle they bid on, of course uh, their but deposits are lying with us, which we can forfeit and pass on to the seller. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Sagar Parikh from Deep Financial Consultants Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. For, hi, thanks for taking my question. So hi. my question uh, earlier was actually on this revenue split only. So just to understand it more better, so this 57% you are saying is the remarketing business is largely the uh, the uh, commission or the broking income, right? Is that a fair understanding? And the remaining is all advertisement driven income. Uh, that is correct. I think uh, I think the income in Samil is transaction commission. Income. That's correct. Okay, and the remaining is all ad ad driven. So forty percent media, of for manufacturers and dealers. Yeah, correct. Okay, understood. And uh, my second question would be on this uh, uh, on your P N L. So uh, there is this line item of interest expense of seven eight crores every quarter. So is that uh, related to India's accounting? Because I believe we don't have any debt yes. on our books, right? Yes. That is correct. Yeah, okay, so what? So this index accounting. So why would there be an interest? Uh, do we have like any rental charges or anything which goes into interest or? Uh, yes. So we. How should uh, we look at it? Uh, uh, look into this interest of. Sure. So uh, you're absolutely right. The office premise and the auto malls that are on rent, both put together uh, form part of these leasing contracts. And under India's, the leasing contract needs to be accounted in a way that we create an asset which is the right to use that asset. And on that, we have to charge the interest, which is the finance cost. So it's just an accounting treatment. OK, so if but I have to adjust that, then entire no seven, eight crores in goes into other expense, right? So then the EBITDA is lower to that extent. Yeah, correct. 
you could you could do that but the india classifies it as a finance cost which is why it's like over there okay sure sure that's it from my side thanks thank you thank you thank you our next question is from the line of jitu punjabi from em capital advisors please go ahead Chitu Punjabi, your line is unmuted. You may please go ahead with a question. Yeah, hi. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Vinay, really, thanks so much for your uh, uh, explanation on the on the on the, on how the last quarter has gone. So, a couple of questions. If we were to kind of uh, see the current Nupka market has been pretty slow and chip shortages on the other regions. If you were to see a normalization of that and the normative growth. that you see in the indian car market what do you think the five year growth trajectory for the space you're in will look like and not necessarily asking you for guidance on what you will grow at and just saying what do you think if you were to extrapolate what uh, other people have done internationally at the digital uh, sharing digital space gain share and all the other trends that play out concurrently how, what do you how do you see the growth in the opportunity um uh, you know let me try and give a broad answer um uh, one is that you know india's car industry or the automotive industry as we showed earlier in the presentation is likely to be the third largest auto market in the world in the next 3 to 4 5 years i mean india is 22 cars per 1000 people the penetration is extremely low so obviously there's a huge um belief that uh, the penetration of cars per 1000 people will go up and and obviously in the next 5 to 6 years you should see a massive growth continuously uh, over a long period of time in the automotive industry and similarly you know india is the largest two wheeler market in the world so that's one part uh, of the answer the other part of the answer is that um, digital you know the, the, the digitization of the auto industry which is the second big driver for businesses like ours uh, india is at a very early stage of digitization um, you know in the auto industry um, and digitize the, actually what's happened in the last 2 to 3 years consumer behavior has changed where consumers have come online to shop or look for their cars or find their cars or buy a loan etc etc but monetization of the industry or distribution of spends in the industry have not kept pace uh, i think today barely 12 13% of all money spent by manufacturers dealers and stakeholders is on digital uh, the bulk is still on offline media and offline transactions and i think that in most large developed countries is 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 probably three times or four times 40% 35 40% the range we've seen we feel over the next 5 years two big trends one is of course the auto industry is bound to grow uh, and the second thing is the digital allocation of spends by dealers manufacturers towards transactions or other stakeholders banks etc etc will will go up and and these two are the big driving forces naturally for all businesses like ours because um you know when you have a combination of digitization and spend on digital and the industry growing i think those are the drivers for for the industry as a whole and do you put a number to it i mean in the sense that do you think that this can grow at 30% i mean the opportunity size i don't know whether red sea has laid that out uh, we come to lay it out at what the digitization pace of growth is and in the industry really. report not really man Yeah, I think they've just said that you know India they're twelve thirteen. I think the US is at thirty five forty, and Europe is at thirty five forty percent. So if you look at India at twelve and they're at thirty five, I mean just the pace of growth it should be reasonably strong. Okay, okay. The second question is uh, more a technical one. The CSOP charge that came in, which is a non cash charge, is that going to recur next year as well, or is it just? Uh, I mean, it's, it's still March thirty first. It's still March thirty first. It affects only this financial year. Correct, and so it's not like it's going to keep coming every year in such quantums. That's no. the question. No. Uh, no. The third point, the third question is in the used car business. Is there a rollout plan that's substantially larger than where you guys are, are running at right now? And do you think uh, that in three or five years could be a significant part of the business? So, so uh, let me answer that. The used car business is already a significant part of our business. 57% of our revenues come from our C to B B to B business, which is completely used vehicles, uh, which is the auction business where consumers and you, like you and me, and big businesses sell to dealers and fleet owners. It's a completely used vehicle platform, 
where 57% of the revenue comes. The balance comes from car wale and car trader consumer platforms where you can buy a new car or used car. And even that has a significant used car element in it. The larger part is new cars, used cars are significant. So if you look at our revenues, obviously we are mostly a used car revenue business, right? Number one. Um, then look at the future. Um, we believe the same source of revenue today, the next two to three years will be significant for us or significant parts of our revenue for the next two to three years. But if you look at a long period of time, maybe three years to 10 years, there are multiples, not only the used car revenue growing or a new car revenue going to grow, uh, but uh, other streams of revenues which you're working on, whether it's financing, insurance, uh, transactions, et cetera, et cetera, will become significant for us, right? Um, our attempt is, you know, as I said, organically keep growing our businesses like we have been. You've seen the organic growth of 46% in the first six months. Um, but inorganically, look at opportunities around, uh, you know, value-added service like financing insurance or or, or car servicing repairs, accessories. Um, and really a factor of our next three, four, five years or the longer term is a factor of not only organic growth, but inorganic growth through value-added services and other services and, and new age businesses which we want to invest or acquire. Okay, super. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vijit Chen from City. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Vijay. Hi, Vijay. Just a couple of questions from my side. On the new vehicles business, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, you know, uh, two things. One, the new product development initiatives that may be underway. And second, we've recently seen, uh, you know, OEMs like Mercedes Benz uh, try out a uh, direct to consumer type of a direct retail model. Do you see that increasing and does that benefit you, impact you in any way? Uh, that's my first question. Uh, uh, on the new vehicle side, and the other question on the new vehicle side is. Uh, uh, do you think the new OEMs that are emerging, especially in the EV side, etc., we've seen this in China where, you know, the marketing spend allocated by the new OEMs is much higher versus legacy OEMs. Do you see that trend in India in your businesses as well? Uh, and I have other question on Yuska, which I'll just follow up after this. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Vijit. I think the first part is uh, the new product initiatives and, and, and on the new car side. So as, I, as, I, as we talk in the presentation, uh, we, we are working hard on uh, really digitizing the entire journey of buying a car, which is, includes new cars, right? I think our whole objective here is, which is if you come online, is how do you find a car, select the inventory you want of any type of car, you know, get a loan instantly disbursed to you from any bank you like or any bank you a preferred customer to. How do you trade in your old car and get instant price? And how do you get the new car delivered to you, you know, within an hour, right? Um, and, you know, obviously one, part, of, part, part of this is about uh, integration deeply with banks and, and building technologies with them. Part of it is about booking online. Part of it is about in the future even getting registration done online because there's a government or or, or, or a regulatory angle here as well, right? Uh, but but we are working heavily on digitizing the entire journey of buying a new car. Um, and we're working closely with all stakeholders uh, uh, and building technologies. And for some of these stakeholders, as I said, we're building technologies for them as well. Uh, so that's a big part where we're saying, listen, not only can you select which car you want or not only you can choose which car you want to buy online, but you can complete the entire journey of owning or buying the car, whether it's a loan or a, or a booking or, a, or, 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 a, or an offer on the car online, right? Which is almost like creating a complete shopping site for a new car. That's the project which is cl close to us and we've been working on for a few months uh, and, and we'll continue to work on continuously. Um, you know, the second part is um, what is Mercedes and some of the other manufacturers who are selling directly uh, or, or now invoicing directly. I think what Mercedes Benz, to my knowledge, is doing is is um, invoicing the vehicle to the customer directly and controlling the inventory. But really, the dealer is is the place where which controls the entire experience of of selecting the car, finding the car, or or delivering the car to you, although the vehicle is is directly built by Mercedes Benz to you. So I think it's it's an attempt to make sure that the inventory is centrally controlled by Mercedes Benz. Um, to us, I think you know uh, whether it's Mercedes Benz model or or a more traditional distribution model through dealerships. I don't think it matters too much. Uh, we are really in a platform where all our 34 million customers we want to integrate Mercedes Benz so that they get the vehicle online and booked online, or we want to integrate with a dealer, or we want to integrate with any stake or a bank. But, but it doesn't change how we think as a business. Uh, clearly, the more digitized a process 
uh, by any manufacturer or dealer, the greater the benefit to platforms like ours because the customer's offering becomes better and better. Our attempt is to push every manufacturer and every dealer to digitize the entire journey so that we can into- incorporate that for all our 34 million uh, you know, customers. Um, and, and I think this is underway. COVID has accelerated uh, behavioral change of all stakeholders. Uh, so, so this is getting accelerated in India and everywhere in the world uh, on, on digitization. Um, and the last part was do manufacturers or newer manufacturers spend more money. Um, I, I think generally you would find that manufacturers who are looking to build a brand spend money, uh, uh, whether it's newer or older, I don't think it really matters. Um, so I, I, it's, it's really, really about who's spending money on, on how much they believe in digital, how much they believe in creating a digital brand, how much they believe in, you know, uh, spending on brand at all. So I think all these factors matter. I don't think new or old matters. Got it. Hi. Uh, my next question is, uh, in the, uh, could you give me a sense of, so within the, uh, you know, within the B2C business, uh, what part of it uh, will come from dealers versus from OEMs? And I know you've answered uh, a big, a big part of the, uh, you know, revenue split question earlier. But if you can help understand, is, are new dealer, new vehicle dealers, a big part of your business at all, or should we think about that business as, you know, a OEM ad spend and second, uh, used car dealer ad spend? Oh uh, no, dealer is a significant part of our new car business. The manufacturers are uh, the revenues are larger uh, out of. Uh, the B2C side, but but dealer is significant too. Uh, um, I think uh, we've seen that in some other markets as well. That uh, it starts in manufacturer spend, and dealers, uh, you know, is significant. But over periods of time, dealers, um, you know, uh, percentage of their total spend to digital are much higher because, you know, if really if you look at the market by itself, if you're a dealer in India to spend money, um, digital is probably the easiest way to spend money just because it's you know transaction driven. It is uh, uh, more direct to your direct customer uh, and more specific. Uh, also, offline advertising uh, channels are not easy for dealers. Television is very hard for them to do. Print is expensive. So, so digital tends to be the way the dealers accelerate their spends. And we feel in the next four or five years, all the manufacturers, the larger part, you know, dealers will keep up pace and catch up there, right? I think, uh, or maybe even go higher than manufacturer spend. Okay, um, that's how the breakup is really. Thanks. Um, my next question is uh, just a few more questions. So, uh, one is uh, within the used car business, have you seen any higher interest from a consumer point of view in the last six months, especially since uh, you know the capacity constraints on the new car side uh, have been high? And we've seen this in US and in other geographies where a non-availability of new cars is kind of taking used car pricing up. And a lot of interest in these cars have also gone up. So that's part one. Have you seen that uh, from a customer point of view, from a traffic point of view, a shift towards the use car categories? And the second question is, on the app shop, uh, model that you have, uh, do you think your marketing spend will necessarily have to go up from here, given that you would be you know, pushing the pedal on this uh, use car transactions business? And how, how should we think about marketing spend from a going forward basis? And, and, sure. and I'll just add uh, my final question to it. Uh, could you give me uh, your current dealer count on the on the used car business? Uh, sure. So the first two uh, parts is um, you know um, around marketing spend and and used car market itself. Um, you know the demand for for cars generally um, post uh, this lockdown seems to be strongly back. As I said, 34 million customers a month come. Whether it's new cars or used cars. There is a new car general supply constraint. Uh, it's been in September, at least we can see visibly. Um, the demand for new cars and used cars, in my mind, both in the last quarter has been reasonably strong. Um, supply has been an issue for new cars. Um, you know, do we need to spend more money on marketing or 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 Abshore marketing? Um, you know, Carwale Abshore is Carwale as a primary brand and Abshore as a, as a peace of mind brand. 34 million customers a month come to these platforms. Uh, that's 3.4 crores. I'm not sure whether we spend more money, how many more customers can we bring? Uh, but but 34 million a month, 87% organic, it shows the affinity. So we don't feel, of course, we continue to do our digital advertising uh, to bring 13% of our traffic and we continue to do that. Uh, we don't see any significant change in our ad spends, uh, you know, uh, uh, coming in. Uh, and we don't need to, as I said, because 34 million customers still come every month, we need to serve them. Um, 
you know, this is a, as, as you know, as you've seen the traffic over last six quarters in the presentation, we are highest of our traffic um, with our current spends. Um, if you look at the traffic over long periods of time, it's growing rapidly. If you look at the organic part of our traffic, that is growing. If you look at the Google Trends course, you know, we're strong. So, you know, whether it's brand affinity, whether it is traffic growth, whether it is absolute traffic, all of it seems to be in line. Um, so we don't see any significant need to increase ad show spends, number one. Um, the number of breakup of used car dealers is not a metric currently, you know, which uh, which we are able to give out. Am I, am I right, Anisha? Is that uh, correct? Is, was that the question? Number of used car dealers, is it? Uh, what we can say, the actual outlets are in nine cities. I think that's what we're saying. Thank you. We'll take our last question from the line of Pratik Kumar from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Hello, yeah, good morning, and thanks for the opportunity. Then my first question is on just a clarification on this AppShore uh, franchise business. Is this, the, is this the extension of C2B, B2B business or the, or the consumer driven piece? Uh, and what is the size of such showrooms and who bears the cost when some vehicles don't get sold to such franchise? So uh, this is the extension of the consumer side of the business. It's where consumers can come to Carvale and book a car online and select a car and find a car. So it's a, it's an extension of really a B2C new car, used car businesses, uh, primarily B2C used car business. Uh, it's really digitizing the entire journey of buying a car online, right? And and making sure you can get the car with complete peace of mind. Um, and the second question was, uh, sorry, I just didn't hear the second question clearly. Could you just repeat the second question? I mean, um, I mean, what are the size of such showrooms? How much they accommodate in terms of number of? Uh, uh, it differs. It differs. It, it, it just differs. It, I, I, I'm not sure. Vikram, uh, would would the Bangalore one uh, versus it, it could differ from I don't know 500,000 square feet to 5,000 square feet. I'm not sure. Sure, you want to answer that question, Vikram? Yeah, I mean, it, it differs depending on the city, depending on the kind of dealer, depending on the location. It yeah. differs from dealer to dealer. Uh, but these are high quality dealers uh, delivering high quality uh, vehicles to our consumers. Uh, related question was who bears the cost when such vehicles are not sold maybe on some such franchise? Uh, sorry, yeah, I forgot to answer that. The dealer, the dealer is responsible really for making sure that the vehicle is purchased and sold. Uh, okay, uh, my second question is on. Uh, uh, would you be sharing data on like sort of business for a consumer related business on the number of lead generations for sellers uh, or the number of dealers using your tech based product and tech based services? Uh, like I, I think some of it was mentioned uh, in RHP uh, indicatively, but uh, would you be uh, giving this data in future? We we normally you know the the, the key metrics of the company are, uh, is the number of tra the traffic or number of users, which is thirty four million unique customers a month, uh, or number of vehicles auctioned or revenues in EBITDA. So those are the kind of data we've been bringing out in the RHP, and and I think the quarterly earnings also been very consistent with uh, the metrics, um, with which are the key drivers of the business in relation to the RHP. And just to answer, uh, do you come to know uh, the transacting you Sorry. Sorry, I was just going to add to your question where you asked uh, how many of the dealers are using the software. The fact is that it's all integrated. So we have created the backend software. So whenever we transfer or uh, uh, share a lead with the dealer, it's not over an Excel or an email. It is pushed from our system to their system, which is built by us. So everybody uses the system or the software that is built. So we are connected to every dealer through a system that has been built for them. No, I mean, uh, we mentioned some uh, data of we have some 5,000 dealers uh, in India and some of them are penetrated uh, for us and some of them are not. So that from that perspective, I was asking. I think uh, you're referring to the industry report of what Red Sear wrote of how many used car dealers are using online services and how many. It's not kind of from our section of that. It's an industry report section actually. Okay. Uh, and uh, do we come to know how many of these 34 million customers like do transaction on the platform as well? Uh, we, we do track on our systems uh, uh, from the 34 million, how many, you know, uh, put in leads to dealerships and how many, uh, or some estimation of how many would buy um, um, because it does get recorded on our systems. That's correct. It's a funnel. Okay, and one last question uh, you may choose to not answer. Uh, why do you think like some of your non listed peers are getting much valued much higher? 
I mean, is there anything which which they are doing which we are missing? Um, hard to answer. As I said, I don't I don't know the reason. So honestly, there's a question in our mind because I think what they are doing is part of what we are doing. Our ecosystem carries exactly what they do. So we have C to B, B to B, all of it. So it, it's a question for us. I think we should be. Again, I, I'm not sure whether we can say this, but we should be three x of the valuation for sure. So it's a question that is there in our mind too. But we can say that we are doing the right thing. The business model might be different, uh, like inventory model or the model which we have. Is this something which is very different and perceived very differently? Uh, I, I think the way to answer that we are building out an automotive ecosystem where we um, um, really are saying this: we are a customer, you can come and sell a vehicle, buy a vehicle, buy a loan, all of it on one platform. Um, I think some of them are building one part of their business, uh, not the entire uh, ecosystem, uh, and that's where we are different. If you look at the brand affinity scores, you've seen the differences. If you look at the traffic scores, you've seen the differences. Um, you know, uh, but you know, you look at the profitability metrics, adjusted EBITDA, or uh, there's a difference there as well. So, so you know, I think what we've tried to do is stay focused on our business, focus on the ecosystem. Um, as you know, we're the only listed company as well. Uh, all the metrics we 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 have we have reported, and we're the only listed business among all these competitors. And that may be some idea of. Um, why we've been able to list versus others, right? I think that may be an also question mark. But, but yeah, uh, I think our focus is really to stick to our core business, grow it in a healthy manner, 28% EBITDA margin or adjusted EBITDA margin. So just stay focused on our business and and grow and build over a long period of time. What we want to create, uh, um, really building this automotive digital ecosystem. I think that's the way to think about it and not worry about valuations at this point. I think it's really about uh, and definitely not competitive valuations. It's really about creating a certain customer experience for us right uh, and and really making sure that we achieve our goals of giving the customer the best experience in the journey of buying that buying a car or, or selling a car uh, thank you thanks for all the responses and keeping up all the thank you okay. thank you thank you thank you everyone. ladies and gentlemen that would be our last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments thank you and over to you uh, thanks everybody for joining in, and you know it's it's our real first uh, earnings call. Um, I hope we've been able to answer as many questions as we can, and you know transparently come across and explain our business to you. We are really excited about you know the business going forward. Um, you know even in the last quarter or the last six months, we've achieved our 46% growth, 104% EBITDA growth, uh, adjusted EBITDA growth, and we feel that. Uh, you know, in the next long period of time, India is at a cusp of digitization. We are really trying to contribute in the auto industry to get it digitized and and make sure our customer who's coming to buy or sell a vehicle, you know, benefits from getting a fantastic shopping experience. So that's all I want to say. And thanks again for you know joining in. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Ladies, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference.